today is how to make your organization data driven. And he will, of course, speak about this in more detail. He's the expert in this area. So I thought it best today to dive, uh, deviate from our normal session and bring in an, a, a true expert on this particular topic. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make Don the presenter. Okay, and um, that should happen. In, yes. So, Don? Yes, Roy. Thank now. you very much. Yes, I can see your, uh, your uh, transfer of presenter rights. I've just shared my screen. And, William, can you hear my voice okay? I can hear you clearly. Excellent. Thank Everybody you very much. Everybody else is muted. Right. Yes. Perfect. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Don Farber with Vineyard Soft. I'd like to add my thanks to Williams for taking the time to be with us today. And, and as he mentioned, I'm going to talk about this concept of making your organization more data driven. And just to give you an idea of how we're going to spend the time today, the first 18 to 20 minutes or so, we'll start in a business level overview. <clears throat> Excuse me to talk about what it means to become data driven, some supporting technologies that you can look into, how folks are actually using these technologies today, et cetera. Then we'll jump into an application that enables this concept of becoming data driven. I'll show you how that application works, how you can go about configuring it to your particular requirements. That software demo also will take about 18 to 20 minutes which should leave us time at the end for Q&A and some wrap-up by William. So let's get right into this. I always like to begin this discussion by having you ask yourself when in your daily business activities with Sage 300, or for that matter, even with other applications, but well, let's focus on Sage 300 for today, did you find yourself in the position of saying, if only we had known? If only we had known that certain customers were so far past due in paying off their invoices, we would have done something. We would have sent them copies of their invoices. We would have put them on credit hold. We would have notified their account manager. If only we had known that we had specific uh, leases or contracts that were coming up for renewal, then we wouldn't be in the situation of having a piece of equipment fail on us that we no longer had a valid service contract for. Or even such things as if only we had known that particular customers of ours had stopped buying from us or had changed their buying habits. The scenarios that you see on the slide in front of you right now are all perfect examples of what we like to call these if only we had known scenarios. Basically business conditions that happen in your daily business life and if you had known about these or known about them a little bit sooner, you would have been able to prevent a problem, you would have saved a customer, uh, you wouldn't perhaps have, uh, have lost revenue. So what we're talking about here is reversing the process whereby you get critical information out of your Sage 300 application because today, chances are, that you periodically run reports, you run various analyses and queries to retrieve data from your Sage 300 system to tell you what's going on and to figure out what kind of action you need to take. And so the concept behind a data-driven organization is to reverse that process, to enable Sage 300 to proactively determine if certain critical business conditions have occurred, to proactively reach out to you, that is Sage 300 reaching out to you and tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey, this requires your action, this requires your attention, and even enabling Sage 300 to automatically respond to those conditions once they occur. That, in a nutshell, is the concept of becoming more data-driven. Now, a technology that supports that, the technology I'm going to be talking about today, is called Sage Alerts and Workflow, and it is a data-driven uh, technology. So a couple of words about it, just to give you a little bit of background. Sage Alerts and Workflow is actually classified by industry analysts under what's called Business Activity Monitoring, or BAM, as if this industry of ours needed yet another acronym, but there it is. Personally, I prefer to think about Sage Alerts and Workflow as a smoke detector for your business data. We all know what smoke detectors do for our houses. I think protecting and acting on critical business data and business activities is every bit as important. 
Now, I think whenever considering a new software technology or investment, you need to ask yourself, well, what kind of a, um, an impact on our system resources, on our IT staff is that going to make? And I think a, a key component of alerts and workflow is the fact that there are over 12,000 organizations worldwide using this technology, but our support staff, and we do all first level support for the product, we receive fewer than nine incoming support calls a day. And what that really speaks to is the fact that alerts and workflow is what I call a set it and forget it type of technology. You set it up, you tell it what conditions to look for, you turn it on, and you walk away from it. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail once we get into the application. Down at the bottom part of this slide, just some industry awards and accolades over the last uh, number of years. You can read those as well as I can read them to you. So let's move on and talk a little bit more in depth about what alerts and workflow can do. If we go back to those business scenarios from just a couple of slides ago, when a customer is overdue, when a lease is about to expire, what we've now done is we've completed those scenarios in red with what alerts and workflow, or ANW as we like to call it, can do automatically. When a customer is overdue, let's have alerts and workflow automatically resend those customers copies of their overdue invoices. And note, although the primary use of this technology is to look for conditions and send alerts, the product isn't called Sage Alerts called Sage Alerts and Workflow. So if you look at, for example, the third example on the current slide, when an order has an excessive discount, let's have Alerts and Workflow put that order on hold. So Alerts and Workflow can do more than just tell you about business conditions. It can take actions in response to them. So let me now take you through the components of the Alerts and Workflow solution. Number one, it starts out by monitoring your Sage 300 application for any business conditions that are important to you. And that last statement bears repeating, any business conditions that are important to you. Out of the box, Alerts and Workflow ships with roughly 70, that's seven zero pre-configured conditions that it monitors for in Sage 300. We'll take a look at what some of those are in just a couple of minutes. But note the eight items in yellow, the eight types of conditions that alerts and workflow can look for. Uh, upcoming dates, like an invoice's due date or thresholds, uh, uh, more than uh, perhaps 80% of a customer's credit limit has been used up. Inactivity monitoring. You know, I like to say sometimes the most important thing you need to know about your business or about your customers isn't what has happened what hasn't happened but should have happened, such as a customer who usually buys from you month after month after month, and now we've gone 20, 25 days into a month, and that customer hasn't purchased from you yet. Now, when it comes to monitoring various conditions, as I mentioned earlier, any business condition that's important to you, and that includes also telling you whenever someone has changed the value of critical information in your Sage 300 database, such as a change to a customer's credit limit or credit status. <clears throat> now, I mentioned earlier that with Sage Alerts and Workflow, you can also use it with other business applications, not just with Sage 300. Maybe you also own Sage CRM. Uh, maybe you own a human resources application or a customer service app. Alerts and Workflow can also work with, monitor, send alerts and trigger workflow for any of your other business applications as well. And just to give you an idea of some of those other business applications that alerts and workflow has been used with, I've brought up a slide that shows some of the other application names. And under CRM and Help Desk, you see Sage CRM listed at the very top of this list. Is this an exhaustive list? Absolutely not. It's just some of the other applications we've seen alerts and workflow used with. Now, an component of alerts and workflow is its ability to monitor the content of incoming email. I don't know about your organization, but here at VineyardSoft, we have a lot of generic email accounts, info at VineyardSoft, sales at VineyardSoft, finance at VineyardSoft.com. If you've got those same or similar generic email accounts, I'd like to ask you, whose job is it to watch over emails that are coming into those accounts? Or as is so often the case, sadly, those generic email accounts are simply black holes where emails go to die. 
Well, alerts and workflow can monitor incoming email, can see who they're from, what they're about. It can notify the appropriate people and even respond by sending back requested information. And since I mentioned that alerts and workflow can look at more than just your Sage 300 application, it's worth mentioning that alerts and workflow can also detect conditions between Sage 300 and any other of your business applications. <clears throat> Pardon me again. So if, for example, you are using a CRM solution like Sage CRM, you can say to alerts and workflow, I want to be notified when a new sales opportunity gets created in Sage CRM for a customer who is on credit hold in Sage 300 or has overdue invoices in Sage 300. So it's real enterprise-wide monitoring and response technology. Now, alerts and workflow can also monitor your operating system. We're not trying to compete with the likes of Norton or Semantic Tools here, but since you're monitoring everything else within your business, you might want to use it to monitor OS conditions as well. Over on the middle left is a new module that we just introduced with alerts and workflow called Alert Acknowledgements. You know, sending an alert is all well and fine, but actually determining whether that alert has been successfully received, read, acknowledged, and if that person's going to take some sort of action on that alert, that's even more valuable. So alerts and workflow does include the ability to send an alert and require that the recipient acknowledge receipt and even specify the action that they'll be taking. Now, you've heard me mention the word alerts a number of times, so it's worth mentioning the methods by which those alerts can be sent out. Of course, email is the most common, most widely used alert delivery method, but coming up pretty quickly, excuse me, in second place is text messaging, of course, to a cell phone. But whether it's via uh, fax or instant message, uh, alerts and workflow pretty much supports any alert delivery method. And I've highlighted a couple in red on the current slide charts. You know, sometimes a picture really is worth a thousand words. So instead of sending someone a 10-page email or detailed report, how about just sending a chart that sums up the condition that, uh, that has occurred? And dashboard alerts. You know, email is all well and good, but you still have to go into email. You have to wade through spam. You have to open the appropriate email alert message. Whereas web-based dashboards are one of the alert delivery methods that come with alerts and workflow. And so imagine having a window up, for example, in your finance department that always shows a list of those invoices that are coming due for payment within the next two, three, or five days. Or a window up down in shipping that always shows a list of all orders that are due to be shipped out today. Now, I just alluded to uh, using alerts and workflow to run and deliver reports. And in fact, all of your Sage 300 reports can be generated and delivered by alerts and workflow. So whether that's a stock status report, an AR aging report, all of your alerts can be, excuse me, all of your reports can be generated and delivered by alerts and workflow. But that actually resolves itself into five specific benefits. First of all, Scheduled reports. If you have a report that needs to run every day at 9 o'clock in the morning, alerts and workflow can do that and distribute that to the appropriate recipients. But you might have certain reports, like an AR aging report, where you say, only if a customer becomes more than 90 days past due, then do I want alerts and workflow to generate my AR aging report for that customer and send that report to that customer's account manager. I've alluded to the ability for alerts and workflow to generate and deliver forms and documents like invoices, statements, picking lists, and dunning notices, purchase orders, et cetera. I've alluded to graphic alerts. And finally, if you also happen to be um, wanting to allow staff to request and receive reports themselves without going into Crystal or your reporting solution, Alerts and workflow can actually allow people to request and receive reports via email, kind of a cool use of the technology. Now, the final component of alerts and workflow is indeed that workflow part of the solution. When we say workflow very specifically, we mean the ability for alerts and workflow to go back into Sage 300 and actually add or update data. If a customer is past due, let's have alerts and workflow go into Sage 300 and put that customer on credit hold. If an inventory item has dropped to its reorder level, let's have alerts and workflow create a purchase order in Sage 300. 
And if a customer does get put on credit hold, let's have alerts and workflow potentially go into Sage CRM to schedule a phone call between that client's account manager uh, and the client themselves. Now, I've got a quick study here. Just wanted to touch upon this briefly before we take a look at the application. A Toyo Inc., multinational manufacturer of ink for printing presses. Uh, I'm just going to skip down right to the bottom line here. Two items that you see in red at the bottom of the slide. Toyo Inc. was able to save over 100 work hours, staff work hours a month by automating a number of processes like invoicing and statement distribution and running and delivering reports. One of their focuses, however, was getting past due clients to pay more promptly to have fewer past due clients, and they were actually able to automate this process of collections to the point where they raised their AR collections by an average of roughly $11,000 per month. So you've got a business level textual idea for what alerts and workflow can do. So now what I'd like to move on to is the application itself. So let me bring up Sage Alerts and Workflow. I'm just going to drop back a couple of branches to begin our discussion. Alerts and Workflow. It's a server-based application. What that means is that it's typically installed on just one machine within your IT environment. Alerts and Workflow does not need to have a dedicated server. You could put it on your Sage 300 server, on your SQL server box, or even on your Exchange server if you wished. Alerts and Workflow runs under any Windows-based operating system, so that makes that a mercifully short conversation. And like Sage 300, Alerts and Workflow stores its data in a Microsoft SQL Server database, so technology you're already familiar with. Now, the way Alerts and Workflow operates is once you install it, first thing to do is to tell it what applications, or in the case of Sage 300, what modules you wish it to monitor, such as accounts payable, accounts receivable, inventory, purchasing, and sales orders, as well as to tell alerts and workflow about any other applications that you wish it to monitor, like Sage CRM or Sage HRMS. Now, we're going to take a look at uh, at least one event, maybe a couple of them, and we're going to start out in the accounts receivable branch. Now, the way Sage Alerts and Workflow operates is you tell it what business conditions you want it to monitor for, such as the ones you see listed here on the middle section of my window, whether it's customers who are approaching their credit limit, have had their credit limit changed, have invoices that are coming due, past due, etc. And then for each event, as we call these, you specify what it is you want alerts and workflow to do. And the first step in that is to specify how often you want alerts and workflow to check or monitor for the corresponding condition. We can see that we are right now drilled down into an event that looks at invoices that are coming due within seven days. This event is indeed active and is configured to run every day at nine o'clock in the morning. Now, very mission-critical conditions, perhaps like inventory levels, you can monitor on a much more frequent basis every hour, every half an hour, every five minutes, every minute, or even continuously. And obviously, those that are somewhat less time-sensitive might be checked daily, weekly, monthly, the first or last day of the month, the third Thursday of every month, whatever is appropriate for you. You'll notice that when we cursor over the active branch for this event at the end of uh, the line that pops up there, it says repeat on. What that means is that when this event ran this morning at 9 a.m. and sent out its alerts, uh, tomorrow when it runs again at 9 o'clock in the morning, if some of those same invoices are still outstanding for payment, alerts and workflow will send another or repeat round of alerts. There are some business conditions where you need to be notified over and over until that business condition has been addressed. And there are other conditions such as sending an alert about a newly received sales order or a single alert about a record will do. Let's move on to the second component of this event referred to as the event's query. This is the particular business condition that we want alerts and workflow to look for. You'll notice that the query is called invoices due in X days. And for this particular event, we're triggering on seven being the number of days. Now, if I double click on that particular branch, we're actually brought into this event in edit mode. 
And so if I say, well, you know, for our organization, it's not so important that we get seven days. It's more important for 14 days, 21 days. Uh, any authorized person, and I emphasize the word authorized there, can come in and make modifications to the triggering conditions. Now, you might say, well, you know, Don, within our organization, uh, we need to exclude certain customers from this logic because we know that certain customers always pay late or we have special paid terms with them. So how can I specify those additional customers or additional criteria? And for that, we actually go into what's called the query designer. Now, I always get asked by folks, how technical do you need to be in order to design or customize your own queries? Do you have to know how to write visual basic script or SQL syntax? And the answer to the question is this. You don't have to be a programmer. You're not writing SQL syntax or visual basic script, but you do need to be familiar with the application's database schema, meaning with Sage 300, you need to know what data is stored where. Now, if you've ever written a crystal report for Sage 300, you probably have this expertise. And if you don't, I guarantee you that William and his colleagues absolutely have this knowledge and probably can recite it in their sleep. Now, Alerts and Workflow provides a list of all of the files or tables in the Sage 300 database. Since we're looking at uh, invoices that are coming due, we've retrieved data from a number of tables here, uh, the customer table, the salesperson table, et cetera. Now, I'm gonna jump ahead a couple of tabs to where you're able to pick and choose the individual fields of data that you want alerts and workflow to retrieve from your Sage 300 database. You can see we've chosen to retrieve fields like the amount due and the date of a discount and who the salespeople are associated with a particular invoice. Now, a couple of notes here. You can get quite sophisticated with alerts and workflow. For example, maybe you want to total up all of the past due invoices per customer. You can choose the function called summarize or sum. Maybe you want to simply count the number of overdue invoices per customer. Again, that can be done with the count function. If you want to do things like calculate the number of days until an invoice is coming due, you can click on the button add calculated column and you can choose from a number of even more sophisticated arithmetic functions, such as calculating the difference in days between two dates. I'm gonna jump ahead a couple of additional tabs to where we actually specify the conditions that we want alerts and workflow to check for. Here, we're looking for invoices that are coming due within a certain number of days. We are looking for an amount due that's greater than zero dollars. We don't wanna know about any invoices that are paid off. By the way, everything here is available in plain English format in this nice, easy to use wizard from drop down lists. Once again, you don't have to be a programmer. By the way, I alluded earlier during our PowerPoint presentation that alerts and workflow can tell you whenever someone has changed the value of any field in the database. So if I wanna know if someone changes the date due of an invoice, it's simply a matter of grabbing that field from the left-hand column, moving it over to the right, and alerts and workflow will immediately begin auditing the value in this field, capturing both the old and new value whenever this field is changed. Now, just in case we have any programmer types on the phone with us today, I will show you what alerts and workflow is doing behind the scenes here. It's actually executing a rather sophisticated SQL select statement. Why am I showing you all this lovely code in blue? Because this, is what you don't have to know what to do. Alerts and Workflow automatically creates all this lovely SQL syntax for you based upon the selections that you made in the preceding tabs. And we can even preview the results of this query. Do we have any invoices that are coming due? Uh, and we can specify coming due within how many days. Let's have a quick look. I don't believe we have any, but we'll say coming due within seven days. And let's see if we find any matching records. And as I expected, uh, all of my invoices are being paid promptly. That's a very good thing. But this does allow you to test your query to make sure it's working as anticipated. So now let's take a look at the rest of the configuration of this event. Just to remind you, we're triggering on invoices that are coming due within seven days. So what's gonna happen when Alerts and Workflow finds some of these matching invoices? Well, first and foremost, 
It's going to tell people about them. It's going to send alerts. Now, because alerts and workflow can send out this content, the content of alerts in a number of different forms, we group that all under the branch called deliverables. You can see here on the right, we've got alerts going out via email, fax, instant message, web dashboard, etc. If we are so authorized, we can actually click on one of these branches and choose to edit the alert message text. So if I'm going to have alerts and workflows, send out an alert via instant message. Here right now is our alert message. It's pretty brief. We're showing the invoice number and the amount of, and we're showing that it has a date due. Maybe I'd like to include the date of the original invoice. So let's just go in here and say dated, and let's find our invoice date, which I believe is called uh, date invoice. There it is. Let's double click on that. Let's add ourselves an empty space just to make things more readable. And so that's as easy as it is to not only create, but also customize your alert messages. Now, there are a lot of options when it comes to these messages. For example, if you're going to send an alert via email, Alerts and Workflow also supports HTML formatted alert messages. Do you have to know how to write HTML to do this? Absolutely not. We provide a library of templates to choose from. So you're just dropping the fields into that HTML template. But again, whether it's via email, text message, uh, instant message, web dashboard, they all take the same approach of showing you the fields that you can put into your alert messages. Now, let's come back to our main window. You can see here that we're also having alerts and workflow generate a chart um, of invoices, invoice total per rep. So let's go in. This chart and graphic design tool is part of alerts and workflow. It comes with the application. Let's just take a look at this chart and see what we've got. Okay. So we can see one of our sales reps, Bill over here, has almost a million dollars worth of incoming receivables. Uh, Don comes in number two. But these graphic alerts, they can come as part of an email. They can be attached to an email, embedded within the body of an email alert. They can be posted to a web dashboard for easy access. It's your choice. Then also what's kind of interesting here is that if a customer has an invoice that is coming due for payment, we might as well have alerts and workflow generate that invoice for us. So actually, let me uh, double click on this branch. Here we go. So I think this is really essential and a, and a great uh, um, automation aspect of alerts and workflow. Here, we're having alerts and workflow automatically take our invoice form from Sage 300. We're telling alerts and workflow to create this invoice in PDF format. We have our choice of output formats. I'm a big fan of PDF. And of course, alerts and workflow is going out and finding all invoices that are coming due within the next seven days. It's going to take each of those invoice numbers, pass them into this report. Crystal is then going to generate the invoice for us hand it back to Alerts and Workflow, and Alerts and Workflow, as we'll see right now, will then automatically deliver it to the customer. So as a next step, let's take a look at the subscribers to this event, i.e. those people who are going to receive the alerts sent by Alerts and Workflow. This particular event has four subscribers. We are notifying everyone in our finance group, by the way. Groups as well as individuals are all definable by you. You know, in Sage 300, you've already got people's names, their email addresses, whether they're your customers, your vendors, uh, your sales reps. Do you have to re-enter that into Alerts and Workflow? Absolutely not. Alerts and Workflow will read that data dynamically right out of your Sage 300 database. So you're still keeping your data in just one central location. So we are notifying everyone in our finance group via two alert delivery methods, both email and instant message. Myself, I'm being notified via just email. But notice the final two subscribers here, probably the two most important alert recipients. If you think about it, if we've got invoices that are coming due, we want to notify the customer, and we also want to notify the customer's salesperson or account manager. So those are referred to as dynamic subscribers because they're going to change based upon which invoices meet this event criteria. You might have noticed that when I cursed over my name, it showed my email address as a Gmail address. 
in my case, I actually have two different email addresses because Monday through Friday, I get notified at a work email address, well, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., but on Saturdays, on Sundays, and before or after work hours, I actually get notified at my Gmail email address. Alerts and Workflow can also keep track of your organization's holidays. After all, if no one's going to be in the office to receive an alert, it's probably best to postpone that alert until the next work day. So a lot of flexibility in terms of scheduling and the delivery of alerts. The last step in the configuration of this event is the action. This is what I referred to earlier as the workflow action going back into Sage 300 and putting a customer on hold. Or perhaps you're working with a collections agency, and that agency says to you, do us a favor, once a week, every Friday, or maybe every Monday, send us a file of all customers who have invoices that are coming due or are past due. And in fact, that's the first action that's configured for this event, creating an export file. But these actions are a combination of some wizard-driven actions and some programmatic. Because this is the one place in alerts and workflow that you can configure it to write data back into the Sage 300 database or into any other application databases, this actions tab is covered under an additional layer of security. Not only must a person be authorized for access to alerts and workflow, they must specially be authorized in order to configure any actions for an event. Okay. So let's drop back a little bit, and I just want to touch upon a couple of other items in the software. I talked about Sage CRM earlier and the ability to monitor CRM-related conditions. Well, let's just have a quick look at what some of those conditions are. For the purpose of Sage CRM, looks like we've got about a dozen of those events activated, everything from looking at marketing campaigns to customer support cases, and obviously a lot around sales opportunities, sales that are due to close, sales that are overdue for closing, and even those sales opportunities that have had key values changed, such as perhaps the probability of the sale closing and the forecast close date. We've also got a branch up here called Sage 300 and Sage CRM. To me, this is one of the, the, well, I'll use my favorite word here. It's one of the coolest uses of alerts and workflow because this is where it's looking at conditions between Sage 300 and Sage CRM. So, for example, here, we might have an activity that's scheduled today in Sage CRM, but the customer over on the ERP side in Sage 300 has not recorded a sale within the last 30, 60, or 90 days. If that's the case, perhaps we want to trigger an alert message to the sales rep to say, hey, you've got a scheduled call with this customer today. The customer hasn't placed an order in over 30, 40, 60 days. So I uh, want you to find out what's going on with them. Or perhaps a little bit further down here, a new opportunity in Sage CRM. Uh, and that total of that opportunity plus the customer's open AR balance exceeds their credit limit over in Sage 300. So again, looking at conditions between both ERP and CRM. And now last thing I wanted to show you before we, uh, we start to sum up, we'll talk about licensing and pricing, is this concept of automated trend analysis. You know, that's, that's kind of a new concept uh, in the industry today because trend analysis is usually a very manual Task, running lots of reports, uh, combining and comparing numbers, etc. Let's take a look at this third event. This event is called end of month, down 30% versus average month. So the concept behind this event is that it runs on the first day of every month. In fact, let's take a, a closer look at what this event is doing. The first thing that this event is doing is it's looking for each customer what they purchased for the month just ended. The next step in this event is to look back six months for each customer and figure out what each customer's average monthly sales is based upon that previous six-month time period. And then the last step for this event is for it to compare for each, each and every customer what that customer purchased for the month just ended versus the customer's average monthly sales and see if a customer sales have dropped by at least 30%. Let's take a look at the alert message that this event sends. 
So I'm just going to come in here and edit the email alert. So this is an alert that's being sent to a salesperson, and it's saying this customer of yours has placed orders for the previous month to date that represents a decrease of at least 30% over their average month. And we're showing just four fields of data here. For each customer, their previous end of month orders, their average monthly orders, and the drop reflected as both a dollar amount and as a percentage. How valuable would that be to have waiting for a salesperson when they sit down at their desk on the first business day of a month to be automatically notified about those clients of theirs who have significantly changed their buying habits? Okay. So now you've got an idea for how the application works, which leaves one last topic for our conversation before we wrap up. And that is... Well, perhaps two questions. I might have lied there. The first is, do you need alerts and workflow? Well, there are about half a dozen or so questions that you can ask yourself, uh, including the ones that you see on the current slide. What I'm going to recommend that you do is to visit the alerts and workflow website, and I'll show you that in just a moment, because that actually walks you through a series of questions about your organization and how you do business to determine just how much and where in your organization do you most need a data-driven technology like alerts and workflow? But of course, none of that would be um, valuable unless you knew how the product was licensed and priced. So let me touch upon that. Alerts and workflow is not licensed per user. It doesn't matter how many Sage 300 users you have, how many people you have within your organization. Instead, alerts and workflow is licensed by two things. Number one, according to the number of applications you wish it to monitor, and number two, according to the functionality that you require. Let's start off up at the top of this slide. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's say that you want to monitor Sage 300, that's one application, whether it's AR, AP, inventory, purchasing, etc., for an unlimited number of business conditions. You want to send out alerts to your staff your clients, your partners, as many people as you wish. And you want those alerts to be delivered via all the methods I mentioned previously, email, text message, web dashboard, fax, etc. You'd be looking at a one-time purchase price of just under $1,800. Added to that would be roughly 20% for annual maintenance and support. And again, that is a one-time cost, $1,800. Now your options are listed down at the bottom of this slide. The ability to use alerts and workflow to generate and deliver forms, documents, and crystal reports, your AR aging, your stock status, your invoice and statement forms, that's all included in what we call the reports module. That module, which is very popular, about 75% of our clients opt for it. It's a one-time cost of just under $1,000 as is the workflow actions module. That module is used by about 40 to 50% of our, of our customers. Once again, that's the ability to configure alerts and workflow to write data back into Sage 300, into Sage CRM, into other applications, such as putting a past due customer on credit hold. Note that if you purchase those two modules together, we do give you a $500 price break, so they can be had for $1,500. <clears throat> And then finally, at the bottom of this slide, maybe you say, yeah, I'd like to look at using alerts and workflow to monitor my Sage 300 system, but maybe you'd also like to use it to monitor Sage CRM or an HR solution or a homegrown application. For each additional application to monitor, it is an additional $17.99. However, once you hit four applications being monitored, uh, you're automatically granted what we call the unlimited connection license enabling you to monitor every single business application or database that you own today or ever will own. And that also covers monitoring incoming email as well as monitoring your operating system. Now we've got a little return on investment calculator, ROI calculator, that's available for your use. And I'll show you where you can access that. A number of years ago, we took roughly 1,100 customers who had adopted alerts and workflow. We asked them to go through the ROI calculator and to report back to us how long it took them to pay off their investment in the alerts and workflow solution. Turned out that the average payback period came in at just under three months at 88 days. So pretty fast return on your investment.
Okay. So I'm going to show you the alerts and workflow website uh, in just a minute because I do want to touch upon this slide first. Uh, the website where we're going to take a look in just a minute is alertsandworkflow.com, all spelled out. Uh, from there, you can download and try out the alerts and workflow solution. That is the live shipping software that you can try out uh, if you run into any questions or problems. You have full and free access to our tech support department. All ordering, all maintenance and support, everything related to Sage Alerts and Workflow is coordinated through William, your Sage business partner, and Sage software themselves. So you're dealing with just, once again, one point of contact for all of your Sage-related uh, software. Now, let me jump into my web browser and take you to Sage Alerts and Workflow. This is the website that I just alluded to from here. You can choose to download and try out the alerts and workflow solution, as I mentioned earlier. You can also drill down by Sage product and say, well, what are those pre-configured alerts that come with Sage 300? Well, from here, you can find out what those are. Even if you have perhaps Sage CRM, you can find out the alerts that come with Sage CRM as well. Also, just a brief stop on our documentation page here. Uh, from here, you can download that ROI, Return on Investment Calculator, that I referred to, uh, the documentation, the manual for alerts and workflow uh, is free to download. Uh, it's actually quite readable. It was written by a collection of English majors instead of programmers, so it is quite understandable, if a little bit wordy at times. Also, I would like to point out that uh, if you do decide to move ahead with alerts and workflow, you have full and free access to a library of training videos on the product. Each of these videos runs about 10 to 12 minutes. They're very short, very focused, uh, and have gotten quite good response. You might notice on the current web page that I have up, it refers to a product called Knowledge Sync. Knowledge Sync is our internal name for the Sage Alerts and Workflow product. Functionally, they are 100% identical. And lastly, I wanted to end up by just showing you, this is actually an alert that I received from a customer who had just finished setting up Alerts and Workflow and wanted to show me what they had done. Uh, they had created an email alert that showed them sales order deliveries that were both overdue and coming due within the next week. And as you can see here, they have a number of uh, line items uh, for orders, some details about them, including the due date, the value, or grand total down at the bottom. So whether it's a, a, a table, a chart, a graph, plain text, whatever format you want, uh, this information can be delivered to you by alerts and workflow. So I'm going to come right back to our PowerPoint slide just to once again bring up that last slide. I would like to put in a, a plug, if you will, for William and his team. They are not only a Sage Alerts and Workflow reseller partner, they are an authorized and certified partner of ours. And that's important because it means that they've gone through training, have uh, basically submitted their expertise with the product so you can be quite confident on their ability to successfully implement Alerts and Workflow within your organization. And so, William, with that, I do believe you have a couple of wrap-up slides that you'd like to show to people. So if you like, you can take back control of this presentation, and uh, we can finish up with that. Thank you, Don. Don, can you hear me clearly? I certainly can, William. Okay. So um, what we have now is just a few um, questions and answers, and um, people have been sending me some things through chat. One of the questions they were asking is, um, if um, we if we are alerted, let's for example, there's a new employee, would I be able to send attachment with that email to that employee, that new employee with non-CH documents? I guess what they're referring to is things like emergency contact forms and uh, other PDF files or things like that. Is that yes, possible? a very good. It is a good question. Thank you for asking it. It is very possible. Yeah, you can attach any kind of additional forms or documents to an outgoing email or, for that matter, even post that information on a personalized web page. But, yeah, whether it's PDF documents, Word, Excel documents, anything like that, yes, they can be uh, attached as part of the outgoing alert message. 
I have a, another question that was asked. Um, it was it's regarding the pricing, in that it's a one-time price. And they say, is this something like if the product is upgraded, what happens? Like if you have yeah. an upgrade, yeah. So. so the pricing, you're absolutely right. There's the one-time license fee, and then I, and I made just brief allusion to there is an annual maintenance and support fee. We call it M&S fee. That is roughly 20% of the license fee. And as long as you are current on that maintenance and support, you get all upgrades all new versions at no additional charge. Okay. There was another question I was asking um, when the when the alerts and workflow is checking the database, does it slow down processing within CH three hundred? An excellent question again, and I'm very pleased to be able to answer that uh, with an enthusiastic no, it does not slow down the Sage three hundred at all. What we're doing is we're actually going directly against the uh, Sage 300 SQL database with highly optimized queries. And so our connection to the database is typically, for any given event, typically less than one second of connectivity. And in fact, Alerts and Workflow has an online monitor that will show you uh, the amount of processing time that each event took, but they're highly optimized so absolutely not. There, it does not uh, negatively affect the response time of the Sage 300 database. Now, I do feel that I should mention one item in regards to this, and that is that Sage 300 makes use of crystal reports, and of course, you can then use alerts and workflow to also generate and deliver crystal reports. Some crystal reports can be a little um, a little resource heavy. Sometimes they can slow down not your Sage 300 system, but they can actually slow down your email server a little bit as the production and delivery of those reports get done. So in that regard, what you can do with alerts and workflow is actually have it generate and deliver those reports potentially at off hours, um, maybe at you know two or three or four in the morning, uh, so that your email server is not being negatively impacted. And also alerts and workflow, I alluded a couple times to this alert delivery method of web dashboard. You know, if, if you've got a report that needs to go out to 20 or 30 or 50 people, instead of having alerts and workflow send out 20, 30 or 50 emails, all with potentially a large attached crystal report, you could actually have alerts and workflow send out 20, 30 or 50 email alert messages that say, dear Don, your report is ready, click here to go get it. And then Alerts and Workflow simply copies or makes available one copy of that report. It posts it to a web page or an FTP page, and it becomes an incredibly efficient way to deliver crystal reports. Uh, but again, just going back to the initial question, uh, negative impact on the Sage 300 database? Not at all. Well, thank you very much for that uh, detailed answer. Um, I guess that this is a, a very important um, uh, aspect for this customer, especially, I guess, if they have large databases. Um, it is. There doesn't, yeah, there doesn't seem to be any more questions. Um, so what I'd like to do is just wrap up. Um, this session is being recorded and will be posted to our website. And um, our next session um, will be on October the 25th. So I'm looking forward again to um, uh, having everyone join us again.